NBC has released its house model. Um, and what that means is a projection overall of house control. But the projection has that plus and minus 13 seats there. 218 seats is a majority. They are projecting 219 seats on the Republican side with a margin of error of plus or minus 13 seats. In addition, the decision desk for NBC News is also explicitly projecting that we will not know House control at the conclusion of tonight. And if you mean tonight by 90 seconds from now, sure, that's not a difficult projection to make. But what they mean is in, in the overnight hours tonight. Alex. Steve, independent of whether the Democrats hold the House... Can I ask you just to put this in context historically with what we're looking at, right? Because from from my rough math, it seems like Biden could be presiding over a historically strong showing uh, vis-a-vis what usually happens to incumbent presidents and parties that hold a majority. I, I think there's no question. And by the way, just as you were, we were having this conversation, our decision desk has now officially called North wow. Carolina's 13th district. Wow. So this is a Democratic gain. Again, we've seen, you know, I think uh, five or six Republican gains. This is the second Democratic gain. So just that math starts to come into focus, will come more into focus. In terms of the historical context for it, since the Great Depression, there are two midterm elections where the president's party has actually gained seats in the House. Each time it was single digits. It was 1998 with Bill Clinton in his second midterm, and it was 2002 with George W. Bush in his first midterm. Both of those presidents had extremely high approval ratings on Election Day. Bill Clinton's approval rating in the 1998 exit poll was 68 percent. If you remember at the time, House Republicans were pursuing impeachment against him. There was wide public opposition. And there was a backlash that resulted in an approval rating for Clinton of near, nearly 70 percent and Democratic gains in that midterm election. And in 2002, George W. Bush carried a 63 percent approval rating into the election. Remember, it was a year after 9-11. There's a lot of unity behind Bush in the nation. And Republicans managed a gain of eight seats in the House in 2002. Joe Biden's approval rating in our poll and in just about every other poll, it's right around this coming into this election, is 40 Four percent. Donald Trump's approval rating in 2018, when his party lost 40 seats, was 45 percent in our poll. Barack Obama's approval rating, when his party lost 63 seats in 2010, was about 43 percent. Bill Clinton's approval rating, when his party lost 54 seats in 1994, was 46 percent. Biden's number, his approval rating, was right in the range where presidents are when their party takes it on the chin in midterm elections. And you compound that with the attitude towards the economy that is coming through in every poll. I know it's in our our exit poll, there's a tighter margin there between economy and abortion, but economy still ranks number one. And the mood on the economy in our final NBC poll was 81 percent of uh, voters expressing dissatisfaction with the state of the economy. The context for that was the last time that number was that that high was 2009, 2010. It was the prelude to Barack Obama and the Democrats getting absolutely clobbered in the 2010 midterm election. So to, we will see where this lands. The Republicans may get control of the House still. They may get control of the House with a little bit of a pad. That's the apps. That's the best case scenario for Republicans right now. There's also a scenario where Democrats hold the House and only lose you know, two, three seats. And there is a scenario where Democrats hold the House and actually gain seats. And so I, I, I think given the history that I just laid out there, the fact that that's where we're sitting right now and that that's the range of possibilities suggests, you know, we've had sort of an idea of what the rules of politics are about how midterm elections kind of automatically, you know, represent this backlash against the ruling party. And I, we may be just living in a, a, a new political era right now. You know, where you just have massive, that's enough to feature of tonight. You have massive, massive, historically unprecedented turnout in these elections. These are numbers, the the turnout you're going to get in this midterm election would have passed for presidential election turnout not that long ago. And so we just may be in an environment right now where people are so tuned in, so plugged into politics, and they know which side they're on, and they know which side they're against. And if being motivated, if if you're a Democratic-inclined voter, 
You may not have been motivated, based on all those poll numbers we showed, to vote for the Democratic Party of Joe Biden, to vote for Biden's policies, to vote for what Democrats are. But you may also, you may also be motivated to keep the Republicans from getting power. You may be motivated by, this kept coming up in our polling, this label, threats to democracy, as an issue that voters were concerned about. In our polling, it was overwhelmingly Democratic voters who were giving that answer. I think one of the questions raised by these results is, the looming presence of Donald Trump, his fingerprints are all over so many of these Republican candidacies. We, he was in the news on election morning talking about potentially running for president again in 2024. If that's in the minds of, of Democratic-inclined voters who aren't that nuts about Joe Biden, that might motivate them to come out and vote. That might have motivated them to come out and vote in this election. But this, this is looking like, in terms of the turnout and in terms of the polarization and in terms of this House result, it's almost looking like a mini presidential election. It looks like the almost mm. identical polarization.